Hey, it's Deborah Atkinson with Flipping 50. This is a perfect teachable moment. So it is late afternoon on a Tuesday after a holiday weekend. And, and a Tuesday after a holiday weekend feels like a Monday. And so here's what happens sometimes to an entrepreneur or to any of us, to you. So busy, busy day. And like you, although yes, I'm a fitness expert, I spend much more of my time giving fitness advice. Being a fitness expert doesn't mean you exercise for a living, not today. We can easily deliver in ways that take much far, far better care of ourselves as we do you. But here's what I do at the end of the day, because I too am a woman who's 57 and just post menopause. So I'm gonna help my dog get up in a moment. Oh, he made it. <laughs> 13 and a half, that means like 91. But I do something low. So we do intense exercise early, we do light, late. So if it's late in the day and I intended to do an interval training on the treadmill this morning, or I intended to do a boxing video with my tribe this morning, but that didn't happen, I don't make it up because that throws your hormones under the bus. So I'm gonna do something light and I'm gonna do a yoga with you. Here we go. Alexa happens to be playing a little meditation music. You may or may not be able to hear it, but it matters to me. So I want you just to stand at the front edge of your mat. I want you to rock back and forth between your toes and your heels and really exaggerate as you start. And then I want you to settle in so that you're slowing it down. You're standing on your heels and you're standing on the balls of your feet and your little toe and pressing down all three of those points. So you're grounding your feet, and with grounding comes a lengthening up through the top. So I want you to be flexible at your knees, so you're slightly bending them. That doesn't mean you're really here. It just means that you're not hyperextending. You've unlocked them, and that's a little give and go at your hips. From here, I want you to ground again, feet down. Lengthen up, lifting your knees almost feeling the tops of your thighs, your quadricep muscles, pulling your kneecaps up so they're awake. And I want you to put your hands just on your hip. So if you'll put your hands on that hip bone in front and on the back of your hip or pelvis in the, in the rear, what you'll notice is that your hands may be tipped this way. Top, thumb up, fingers down. I want you to change that. So you have more of an even bucket, like you have a glass of water here and it's perfectly level. It's not going to spill out the front or spill to the back, either one. And you'll adjust your knees and your pelvis in order to do that. So what's happening is your core is already turning on to make those things happen. So what we want is for the core to be awake. An entire yoga practice is really core exercise. From here, I want you to keep a hold of all of these little changes we've made, holding here. You're feeling like you're lifting your rib cage off of your hips, so there's a lot of space in the center. And then drop your shoulders down and back. Think nice and long with your head and neck, but you tuck that chin in very slightly. Crown of your head comes toward the ceiling. And I want you to bring your arms up, lifting, push those feet down into the floor lengthening up and if you can comfortably through your neck I want you to look at your thumbs thumbnails are your focal point reach up lengthen and then on an exhale I want you to dive forward now I'm a little tight you may too be a little tight but I haven't done this for a little bit so I need to let my knees bend slightly I need to let my back round as it needs to and wants to when I come down I'm feeling the weight here in my heels, the balls of my feet, and the little toe, dropping my head down so I'm looking really through my legs. And then I'm going to take an inhale and I'm going to come up to this long spine, this spinal stretch forward. My shoulder blades are pulling back away from my ears. If you're feeling really tight through the hamstrings, you're going to come up here just a little bit higher. And 
then exhale. And I want you to take that a little bit deeper, forehead down. And then on an inhale, you're gonna come all the way to the top. Now, bend your knees if you need to because you have a low back issue because the back stays flat. And so bending your knees will protect your lower back. If you can come up with straight legs and a straight back, that's okay. But that is a little bit more challenging for anybody who's had a lower back issue. And exhale, bring your hands down, take your hands to the heart center. Now let's do what we just did with a little bit more flow. So we're gonna go inhale, come all the way up. Put your feet down, ground them, and reach your fingers to the sky, and then exhale, dive forward, nice and long, from the tailbone to the crown of your head. Let your head crown of your head fall down. On an inhale, lengthen forward. Your fingertips might be on your shins, and then on the exhale, come back down. On an inhale, come all the way up, reaching fingertips toward the sky. And on the exhale, sweep those fingertips all the way out and then back in. You should feel your shoulders come down away from your ears as you do that. One more time, inhale, bring it up. Try and move with the breath here. Exhale, bring it down all the way. Inhale, coming up. This time on your exhale, I want you to step back one foot at a time into a plank pose. So in this plank pose, pop up a push up, soften your elbows. If you have any problems here on your wrist, you can come right down right away and come to your forearms. That'll make the next move just a little bit more difficult, but you need to adjust for yourself. So push back through your heels. Inhale at the top and on it. Exhale, I want you to lower down, keeping yourself as straight as you are right now. Head up higher than your shoulders. And on the ground, or slightly before it, you're gonna crawl forward and inhale coming up here. Now I'm coming up quite a ways further than you might if you're very tight. Now stay down lower as you need to. You may have your knees down or lift them up and then open up through the front of the chest. Inhale. On an exhale, curl your toes under. Use the belly strength that you have to raise yourself up. And then settle your heels down into the floor. Inhale. And exhale. And then release. Really sink into those hands. Make sure that you're pressing through all five fingers on both hands and you're lifting your hips up toward the ceiling, allowing your head to fall down, and taking a deep exhale, allowing your weight to come into your heels, try to wiggle your toes so they're off the floor, and on the end of your next exhale, you're gonna look forward between your hands and step forward one foot at a time, and allow your forehead to come down on an inhale, come all the way back up to ceiling. And exhale. Bring your palms in, right to your heart. Good, and we'll do that again with a little bit more flow. Now you know what's happening. Inhale, come up. And on the exhale, dive forward, pressing your tailbone back slightly so the weight's in the heels. Inhale. Coming to that long spine stretch and on an exhale, step back into that plank pose and then lower down as you continue to exhale. Inhale, bring yourself up into an upward facing dog. Open the heart and then exhale, lift your hips, stepping in to your down dog. Open up all five fingers, lift your hips high. Send your heels down into the floor, wiggle your toes, and breathe out. On the end of your next exhale, I want you to step forward with both feet right between your hands. Look out for the dog. Drop your head down. 
and then on an inhale, remember knees bent if you need them to be, otherwise come all the way up and reach. And exhale, drop your hands right into your heart. Soften your knees, inhale again, here we go. And exhale, dive forward. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, stepping back into that plank pose. Inhale again at the top. We'll take a breath and a pause. And then exhale, lower. Inhale, coming into upward facing dog. Open the heart. And on an exhale, lift up and send your feet down into the floor. Nice job. Inhale and exhale. We'll take a couple breaths here. This should be feeling like a resting pose, and that is Truman breathing heavily, not me, just saying. Exhale here. This is the true downward facing dog with the downward facing dog. Take them both here. On the end of this next exhale, I want you to take your left hand and put it between where both hands were. We're going to scissor the legs, and that just means stagger one in front of the other as you turn and rotate, pushing up off the skin, lift up. Now, if you've got issues with your wrist or your elbow, and in some cases probably your shoulder, this one is a leave out. Open up. Push your hips high to the ceiling, holding open, lift, and brace the reach. And on an exhale, bring this hand down, both palms, even again, exhale and lower. And inhale, coming into an upward facing dog. And exhale, come into your downward facing dog. On the end of your next exhale, right hand forward. Scissor both legs. Bring the arm up. Keep pushing. Raise those hips. Lift, lift, lift. And keep breathing. Pressing away. Use the strength of that arm. Open your chest. You're getting a good stretch through the front of your shoulder and your chest. And then bring this hand down. Downward facing dog. Stepping together, both feet come right between your hands. Take your feet and place them about a foot apart. And then what I want you to do is to root behind your back. Clasp your hands. Oops. Put that earbud back in in case that microphone is actually working. And then we're going to bring this up and over your head. With the arms, I want you to really reach up and over. Keep reaching and extending. And then they go ahead. Reach up and hold, hold, hold. Try to drop in through the legs, but keep them reaching up through the arms. see what I'm going to do right here. I'm going to back up a little bit so you can see my full arm extension. I'm going to take a hold of my left wrist with my right arm and with my left foot I'm going to reach it into the ground. So I'm stretching up and then with that length I'm going to bring my head over to the side just carrying it and keep that lengthening feeling. So I'm allowing my hips to sway to the side. Inhale here. 
exhale, go slightly deeper. And then inhale and come up. Take the other side. You're going to press your right heel into the floor. Raise your right fingertips toward the ceiling. And then on the exhale, take it over to the side. Reach. Keep stretching. Take a little bit longer stretch. Go a little bit deeper. And then bring it up. Collapse your hands together. Hold here. We want you to open a little bit further to the back. Make sure your breathing is not restricted. And then exhale. Now I want you to take those hands. You're going to actually dive forward. Inhale into that nice long spine stretch. And on the exhale, step back. Come again into that plank pose. Inhale right here. Exhale into chaturanga to an upward facing dog. And then into downward facing dog. Breathe through, open up your fingers, weight on your thumb and your index finger. And then look between your hands. And I'd like you to take your right foot, step foot forward between both hands. Spin your left foot around. Use the strength of that right leg to bring yourself up. Take the arms and raise them up. Inhale. And then exhale and sink down. And as you sink down, I want you to let your shoulders fall away from your ears. Your arms stay long, but your shoulders settle down. Inhale. And then exhale. Again, sink slightly deeper. The weight should be in that front heel. The knee should be out toward the little toe side. One more breath. Inhale. Exhale and sink. And then relax and drop the hands down to the floor. Step back. Inhale here. Exhale and roll. Inhale coming up. And exhale. Come into a downward facing dog. And just a small bit of rest right here. Inhale, lift those hips up, sink down into your heels. And again, lift up, think about raising your hips and exhale, sink into your heels. On the end of your next exhale, left foot forward, right between your hands. Right foot spins out and use the strength of that left leg. Inhale, raise the arms up. And then exhale, sink down. Again, inhale. And exhale, sink slightly lower. Make sure this front leg pointing out over the little toe side so this glute is awake here. Inhale. Exhale and sink. One more time, inhale. And on the exhale, drop those hands down to the floor. Step back, pushing back through your heels. And on the exhale, lower down. Inhale, come up, open, drop those shoulders down. And exhale, lift up, send your heels down into the floor. So I'm just going to try to eat my air bud. Exhale, I want you to take your right foot forward, right between your hands. Spin your left foot out. Same beginning as we start here with a warrior one. And then exhale, sink into it. Point your knee out over the little toe side. And then inhaling here, I want you to separate the arms. So they should look and feel like they're on a tabletop. They're pushing downward lowering down, taking those shoulders away from your ears, relaxing, but lengthening through your core. Inhale, 
exhale and gaze over your fingers in front or reach the arms both away. One more time. Check in with this knee. And on an exhale, take both hands down. Step back. Find that plank pose. Lower down. Inhale. Coming into your upward facing dog. Keep that heart open. Shoulders back. And then exhale. Into your downward facing dog. Inhale right here. Lift your hips high. Exhaling. And on the end of your next exhale, left foot forward, right between the hands. Spin that right foot around. Come up into your warrior one. Exhale and sink slightly deeper. Good. Now details here. I want you to think about this back foot, little toe down, the arch of your foot. Think about lifting and hollowing out. Push this knee over the little toe side. Raising the arms, let the shoulders fall. One more breath here. Exhale. Spin the arms. Rotate slightly. You may want to move that front foot over just a couple of inches. Don't wake a sleeping dog. Reach. Looking your gaze right here over your front fingers. Reach it back in the opposite direction. And then exhale as if you're pressing down on that table. Inhale. And exhale. Pushing away, pushing out. And release, take both hands down. And step back. Coming into that plank pose, inhale here. And exhale, lower down. Inhale, coming up. And exhale. Coming into your downward facing dog, send your heels down into the floor, open up your fingertips. Bring it out. And step forward. You can tweak both hands with your right foot. Spin your left foot out. And here, I want you to hop that back foot in just a couple of inches straightening out your front leg we're taking this into triangle pose so the stretch here gets a little bit deeper for lower back for the inner thigh changing the stretch through the hamstring a little bit so as you straighten that leg i want you to take your hand down on your leg but notice that it's sliding here. I'm not putting weight on it. So I'm not resting. My core is actually working and lifting. Hands coming inside works well. If you need to just keep yourself honest so that way you can't actually hold on. So think about this is the center. Taking your foot down to the floor here. This one down, bone straight and the long core. Now extend the arms. So from every part you're extending up, extending down, extending forward, back with your tailbone, legs into the floor, get long lines, open up, you can look up if it's comfortable, and exhale, lengthening. Open, open the arm back a little further if you can. This is triangle pose, hold this for one more breath, and there goes that ear bud, don't eat that. And relax. I want you to take this arm and bring it up. And I'm going to bring you right back down in the same way. Good. And release. Hands come down to the floor. Stepping yourself back. Inhale. And exhale as you lower Chaturanga. Inhale, coming into upward facing dog. And exhale. Coming into your downward facing dog. <laughs> and I'm going to have you step forward with your left foot right between your hands. I'm going to turn away from you as I do this triangle pose just so you can see the difference here. So as I straighten the leg, I first want to hop that back foot in. Now I can straighten the leg and still feel protected. Pressing up. 
and lengthening forward with as flat a spine as I can muster. And your spine will be more straight if you're lengthening over the floor. So the hand can go on that leg, but not wait. So just there for spotting. Want you to bring the other arm up. Want you're sure your both legs are straight. Your core is long, parallel to the floor. Tailbone back, head forward. Bring the arm up and then look up if you can. Lengthen, keep reaching and lifting. Use that core. Stabilize your breath. In and out. And relax. Take both hands down. Standing back into plank pose. Lower down, Chaturanga. Keep your head higher. Then your shoulders. Inhale. Raising up. Shoulders back, heart open. And exhale. We do a downward facing dog and we'll just rest very briefly here. So we're going to actually come down from here by dropping your knees to the floor. Just hold one moment, check in with your wrists, make sure they're parallel to the front edge of your mat. And on the end of your exhale, go ahead and drop your knees down into the floor. Release your feet. And you can come back into child's pose if that's comfortable for you. We're not gonna hold it here in child's pose. We're gonna bring this up, and I'm gonna call this a camel pose, but what I'd like for you to do is roll your mat up. So if you're not comfortable and you don't have much padding on your mat or you're not on carpet, roll your mat up so you've got a little pillow there. Kneeling is not comfortable for you. So if you feel like you don't have a lot of range of motion, also want you to lift your heels up. So curl your toes under. So when you come back, you don't have far to go. And that may be where you go, but this may be your first step. Hands in the small of your back. That can be your fist right here, or it can literally be flat palms. And I want you to lift your heart and open it. So you're feeling just a little bit more open, chest lifted, and that can be your option. For those of you that want to go a little bit further, you can reach back and then allow your head to fall back, but lift your head up. For those of you that can go a little bit further, your feet are actually down and you're reaching way back. Heart up, inhale. Exhale. On an inhale, come straight up the middle. So what I'd like for you to do is so bring those heels in close enough where you feel like your fingertips are gracing the backs of your heels. Excuse me. What I want you to do is on an inhale, you're going to raise your hips quickly up and work on this knee to hip to shoulders. Nice straight line. So there's a difference here that I want you to notice. So it's not just lifting up and allowing that lower back to sag where you may feel lower back, feel some tension. I want you to actually point your pelvis, your tailbone toward your knees. If you do that, you'll feel a little more stretching across the top of your hip flexors. You'll feel like you're engaging here and still lifting here. Your glutes and your lower back and your core are all doing their job working in an integrated way. Glutes are working, lower back's not stressed, and the core is on. Hold on right there. I'm gonna take you together with your hands, clasp them underneath you, and then walk those shoulders, push your hands down, and lift your pelvis again. You're opening the heart. Weight in the center of your head, inhale, and exhale. Now, when I go on to do what we call wheel pose, 
This may be your option. You may want to repeat just this one right here and release the shoulders, unclasp the hands, relax the back. And if that was a significant stretch, felt good. You might want to repeat that one. Here's where I'm going. Palms are under me, like I was going to do a back spring. And on off, deep inhale, I'm going to come up to the top of my head. And then just readjust my hands. On an inhale again, I'm going to push up. Lifting my heart up to the center. Bring my knees together. Don't let them split. Try to keep that evenly distributed curve through your lower back and upper back. Keep breathing. And then when you're ready, slowly come back down. Good. Now don't be too quick to bring the knees into the chest. We'll get there. You want to give your spine a chance to recoil. We just opened it all the way back up. And imagine all the time we spend folded forward. Lift your back, recoil a little bit. Then we can bring those knees in and go in the opposite direction. Give your lower back a little bit of a massage. If you will, you're gonna let your hips drop and rotate around your lower back. We do mini circles. We'll just go three or five times and then reverse directions and rotate, just again, a little lower back massage. Nice job. And release. I'd like you to take your legs and bring them straight out, about mat width apart. Pull your shoulder blades back together, kind of adjust things, palms up, not right next to your side, but just a ways from your sides. Put the weight in the center of your head so you're not jamming your chin down. Have a nice curve underneath your neck. And take a deep breath in. And if you're comfortable, close your eyes. And really exhale all the air out of your lungs. Again, take a deep breath in. As you exhale, I want you to think about the muscles around your eyes and around your mouth and around your jaw and release them. Take another deep breath in and continue that relaxation down through your neck and your shoulders and also through your core. Let go of that middle. Let it relax. And then slowly open your eyes. I want you just to roll off to one side. So not a long extended relaxation period today. If you want to stay right here on your mat, you're more than welcome to. You're ready to come up. Go ahead and push yourself up. Come into a seated position. You can come cross-legged on your mat if that's comfortable. I happen to have a step right here where it's really convenient for me to sit upright, drop my legs down, not have to worry about tension in my hips. Do what you need to do. While you're here, I just want you to think about crown of your head comes up. Allow your chin to come down slightly, but keep your gaze straight ahead. Drop your shoulders down. Take a deep breath in. And think about dropping the shoulders away from your ears while you exhale. Try that one more time. Deep breath in. And exhale all the way out. to your heart. Namaste. And there you have it. The end of the day. Intense early, light, late. Maybe for you, it's a walk. 
Maybe it's yoga, maybe it's Pilates. Maybe it's simply stretching, but not yoga. Whatever is relaxing for you, and to whatever, to the sound of the pool or a fountain or music in the background. The side of head always helps him and them and you. <laughs> so think about switching your exercise up in order to get ultimately what it is that you want. You first have to arrive at hormone balance. You can't skip the hormone balance and then get what you want. This part comes first. So honor the time of day, the type of exercise that you're doing, and if that was helpful, maybe over at flippin50.com on June 9th, every month, I do a free masterclass. This month, it's all about muscle instead of fat. Instead of focusing on what we wanna lose, focusing on what we wanna gain and how that works in your favor. And I'll see you on the flip side.